This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, January the 25th, 2019. Today in 1704, the British governor of North Carolina, James Moore, led raids into Spanish Florida to depopulate the Native Americans living there. The Battle of Ayubale, was, which was fought on January the 25th, was the only real resistance that Moore faced. The real victims were the peaceful Appalachian Indians who were massacred. This wasn't just random, though. It was part of the War of Spanish Succession, a.k.a. Queen Anne's War, which was a much bigger affair between the Spanish and the English over in Europe. The Appalachian Indians were just tragic collateral damage, the end result being that most of the Native Americans in northern Florida were killed, except those residing in the cities of St. Augustine and Pensacola. Today in 1937, NBC Radio Live from Chicago premiered a new format of radio drama that was entitled The Guiding Light. It was melodramatic and a kind of low-budget, low-brow program that was referred to mockingly as a soap opera. In 1952, CBS picked up the program and its characters for a television adaptation. The show ran until September 2009 when it was finally canceled for low ratings after 72 years of continuous production. And today is the birthday of Scottish poet and songwriter Sir Robert Burns. Burns wrote in the native language of Scotland called Scots, as well as in English and in a kind of mix of the two. In addition to the original poetry and political essays that he wrote, Burns collected the many, many Scottish folk songs that were so popular in the pubs and the homes of his friends and family. He was a pioneer of what we know as romantic poetry, and it's hard to overstate the importance of Robert Burns in the Scottish mind. He represents the heart and the soul of the Scottish people with their passion and love and language and history in an almost cult-like way. Today, all over Scotland, people will hold a Burns Night Supper, which will begin by piping in the guests with a bagpiper at the door. Then there will be a welcoming speech followed by the Selkirk Grace. Some hae meat and canna eat, and some what eat that want it, but we have meat and we can eat, and say the Lord be thank it. Next will come a soup, maybe a Scottish broth or a a cockaliki, Then the haggis is escorted into the room accompanied by a group of bagpipers. The haggis is greeted with a traditional Scots toast addressed to the haggis itself. Then will come a long series of whiskey toasts, first to Burns, then to the lassies, then to the laddies. And then will follow some more poetry, and by then the crowd will be ready to sing some of Burns' folk songs. Interestingly, guests from outside of Scotland will then be asked to share poetry from their own native traditions, especially poetry in their own native languages. Finally, the host will call on one of the guests to give the vote of thanks, and everyone will stand together and sing Auld Lang Syne to bring the evening to an end. Robert Burns was born today in 1759, and he died in 1796, but he never really left the minds and hearts of the Scots. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.